wonderful for me to be here. I'm really excited to share with you what I know, and I'm really interested also to get your input. So definitely, I will be asking you to use the chat box and participate. Gamification is, in fact, the use of game design elements in non-game applications, like classrooms, okay? So, contrary to popular belief, gamification is not playing games in the classroom. I just want to mention a little bit about tech specifically, okay? If I get something, if I'm doing an activity that works really well in my classroom, okay? I leave it that way. There's no reason to change just for the sake of change. But then there are some activities that would work better in a digital context. All right, so let's begin with avatars as one of the first things we're going to look at um, through gamification. An avatar is a character and they're often used in games, okay, for a variety of reasons. So the concept of missions or quests is simply to create tasks or activities for your students and you know group a series of tasks okay around a particular quest around a particular uh, goal that you want to achieve them and you can give them whatever names you want okay so here's some few ideas use missions with a digital app for example uh, a mission card you could create a card physical piece of paper or an, uh, a, a virtual card or a PowerPoint or whatever, okay, uh, where the students have to create a word cloud, okay, around some aspects or some vocabulary area that they have uh, recently covered in class. So let's move on a little bit. Uh, we've got the, uh, the principle then of points and leaderboards, okay? Uh, if you're going to give points and put a kind of board, it should be visual. If it's in your computer, it's not very motivating. If you don't feel very comfortable with individual students getting individual points, you can always create groups, okay? Uh, is this too childish for students doing bachillerato? Um, good question. You know what? All ages like playing games, try it and then observe, ask them. Try bringing stickers to class, doesn't matter the age. I've seen 17, I want a sticker too, I want a sticker too. All right, <laughs> stickers for everybody. So now we're getting into the rewards, okay? So these are badges, okay? Badges are basically saying that I did a series of actions in the classroom and now I get a recognition for those actions in the form of a badge or an achievement. Many of you have mentioned the classroom app Class Dojo. These are some of the badges they use in theirs. You know, I get a badge for helping each other or being an independent learner or making an effort with my homework. So you can use them in your class to recognize student efforts, not only academically, but in any number of areas. Another concept of gamification is called a power up, which basically means you did something so you get extra power. Like for example, if they completed four missions, maybe you'll give them a power up. Okay, and a power up I consider in this case a little bit like a reward. Okay, the last principle we're going to deal with quickly is storytelling. Uh, most good games have a narrative, a story, okay? So again, working with storytelling principle in the classroom might be um, because it allows for many, many skills. So I want to go to the very last area, okay? Practical um, things that you can do in the classroom, okay? For skills work, you can create mini quests, as I said, per unit with various missions, you know, one mission per skill, okay? That would be one idea to work on skills through missions. For using textbooks, you could use the principle of badges to recognize achievements as you work through a unit, okay? So for example, you could have, you know, remembering vocabulary badge, okay? Or you could remember helping a partner, okay? And they get a badge if they explained a grammar point to a partner. Hi, Rachel, thanks very much for that really fantastic session. And I'm sure everybody participating would have got some really practical ideas to take home as well.